This video has been sponsored by Whatnot. More on them at the end of the video. Back in my day, there were only 151 Pokemon, and these classic designs have prevailed throughout the years, with Pokemon adding new evolutions, baby Pokemon, mega evolution, regional variants, and of course, most recently, paradox Pokemon and convergent evolution. And out of these original 151 Pokemon, there have only been a handful, in fact, about 10, that haven't had some kind of new form or variation. This is to say that, of course, while Bulbasaur itself has never had a new form, Venusaur has had two in the forms of Mega Evolution and Gigantamax. So I'm gonna go through these 151 today, talk about the new forms they've got since their inception, and of course the ones that don't, the families of Pokemon that have never been touched or iterated upon, I'm gonna explain either why I believe they absolutely shouldn't be iterated on in the future, or give some ideas for Paradox Pokemon regional variants and new evolutions that I believe they should get. So, we've already talked about the Bulbasaur line, let's move straight on to Charmander, which of course has had both Mega Evolution in the form of Mega Charizard X and Y, and of course, Gigantamax Charizard. I expect we'll see many more Charizard forms in future Pokemon games. Blastoise has also had both Mega Evolution and Gigantamax. Butterfree of the Caterpie line has of course had Gigantamax. When we look to the Weedle and Pidgey lines, we see that both Beedrill and Pidgeot got Mega Evolution, and then our first regional forms in Rattata and Raticate getting Alolan forms. And then we move on to our first Pokemon that haven't been revisited since Generation 1, Spiro and Firo. And for these, I decided to go for a Paradox Pokemon, not only because it's the latest thing and it's a cool idea, but I love the idea of a prehistoric Firo that roamed the Kanto Plainlands, a predator more fierce even than Pidgeot. Because I think with Pidgey being the sort of regional bird of the Kanto region, Firo often gets overlooked. So I wanted to play on that ferociousness and also taking the prehistoric tact with bird Pokemon means you can delve into the realms of dinosaurs. Realms, that was a weird way of realms. This is our Paradox Firo, or as I'm calling it, Feathered Fury, and this Pokemon roams the Kanto Plainlands. You could imagine that if this Pokemon really truly is an ancestor to modern day Pokemon, how it's an ancestor to not only Firo, but also Dodrio, Galarian Zapdos, and perhaps even Aerodactyl. It's flying dark type, and it definitely adds a little something to the Firo line that has gone very much uh, unloved. The Pokemon following Firo, of course, is Ekans and Arbok, and at first you might think that Arbok has no new forms, but Arbok is a Pokemon that's been iterated upon. Across the first few generations of Pokemon, depending on the region your Arbok was from, it would have different hood patterns. So I'm actually going to leave it alone, it's kind of the OG regional variant. Of course, the Pikachu line has been iterated on time and time again, getting Pichu in Generation 2, getting Alolan Raichu in the Alola region. We also got Alolan Sandshrew and Sandslash, so that's that evolutionary family done. And then the next one, much like Arbok, I'm not going to iterate on. That is the Nidoran male and female lines. And here we have Nidoking and Nidoqueen. And to be perfectly honest, these are the first Pokemon that would have gender variation in the same way that Meowstic and Jellicent do, if that was a concept at the time of Generation 1. For that reason, I just don't think they need to be iterated on. As cool as the idea of a Mega Nidoqueen or Nidoking uh, are, I would just be Nidoking or Nidoqueen with more spikes. The Clefable line not only got the Fairy type, but also got Cleffa in Generation 1. Volpix and Ninetales got Alolan forms, and Wigglytuff also got the Fairy uh, type, as well as Igglybuff as a baby Pokemon in Gen. 2. Zubat evolved into Crobat in Generation 2, and Oddish got the option to evolve into Blossom in Generation 2, taking us to our next family, Paris and Parasect. And once again, we'll go for a Paradox Pokemon, but this time, let's have fun with it. Rather than going to some prehistoric giant mushroom, let's go to the future and see what it would look like for a parasite to take over a machine, a true virus. This is Iron Virus, or Iron Parasite, and it is a future imagined version of what happens to Parasect. Yes, Parasect was given defenses to fight off the mushrooms and became made of steel and iron, and for this reason it is a steel poison type. But here's the thing. The mushrooms actually ended up integrating with this Pokemon's circuitry, and now there is living biology working alongside the machine. The only thing not alive in there is any sense of what was once a Paris or Parasect. Maybe it's not steel poison, maybe it's bug poison, because I think the original Parasect was, what, bug grass? Uh, I'm not really sure where to take this one, I'm going to need help with it in the comment section. Immediately after this, we have Venonat and Venomoth, who have never had a Mega Evolution or Regional Variant or Paradox Pokemon, and I'm not going to go for a Paradox Pokemon here. Instead, I want to provide a split evolution option for the Venonat that could well exist and coexist alongside Venomoth in the Kanto region. Evolve your Venonat by feeding it a certain pink berry from a pink anime island, and it'll become this. 
Venapink, Pinkamoth, Venafree. I don't have a name for this. It's definitely going to be Bug Psychic type. I think Psychic type is something that's always been sort of somehow tied to the Venomoth and Butterfree families. But I kind of wanted to canonize the idea of the Pink Butterfree here, both tying it into the anime-esque Pinkan Island, but also like combining that theory where Venonat kind of does look like it should evolve into Butterfree and uh, not Caterpie. So yeah, this helped expands the Kanto evolutionary tree. Next up, we have Diglett and Dugdrio that have Alolan forms, and as well as that convergent evolution in uh, Wiglet and Wogdrio. Uh, Alolan Meowth and Galarian Meowth are both forms, of course, of Meowth and Persian, and of course, we've got Perserker as well as a split evolution. And then next up is a Pokemon that I am genuinely surprised hasn't had a new form as a fan favorite, Psyduck and its evolution, Golduck. And again, much like Venomoth here, the writing is on the wall. It should become some kind of psychic type. So, Alex Alan has helped me in creating a psychic Golduck that ties into that kind of Kappa theming, but also the whole big brain idea. It's time for this Pokemon to unleash the power of its headaches and deal out massive psychic damage alongside its water type. I think this is a mega evolution. Most recently, of course, we've seen Mankey and Primeape get Annihilate, which is an evolution that is absolutely perfect for it. And Arcanine, of course, has the Hisuian form. There's Poliwrath that can also split evolution from Poliwhirl into Politoed, and Alakazam that has a mega form. Machamp got Gigantamax. So then after that, we're left with the Bellsprout evolution line. And this is one where I wanted to have a little bit of fun. We haven't done a Gigantamax Pokemon yet. And while at first a Gigantamax Victory Bell might sound kind of boring, that, that's because I, I think it would be. I think the fun route is to do what they did with Pikachu and Eevee as special first stage Pokemon that got Gigantamax and give it to Bell Sprouts. Gigantamax Bellsprout. It takes inspiration, of course, from the classic Jack in the Beanstalk story. As well as that, you can see these Victory Bell style pitcher plants all up along it. They say there's a great treasure, the treasure of Gigantamax at the top of this Pokemon. Additionally, sages from the Johto region saw this Pokemon in battle and created a tower in its honor. Of course, being the Sprout Tower. I just think it could work for a little bit of lore, and we haven't had a Gigantamax yet, and I honestly think Bellsprout out as a Pokemon with more personality than Victory Bell is. Tentacool and Tentacool have convergent evolution partners now in Toad's Cruel and Toad's Cool. Did I say that in the right order? I don't think I did. And while not directly created, we have new ideas of what these designs could look like in the modern age. Golem got an Alolan variant and Rapidash a Galarian. The Slowpoke and Slowbro line not only got Slow King in Generation 2, but the entire family got new forms in Gala, and Magneton, of course, got Magnazone. Then Farfetch'd got Surfetch'd, and we're on to Doduo Do -Do -Do and Dodrio. And at first I was just going to show you this artwork from Vosiris from an old video I did where it was uh, if Pokemon existed in the world of Fallout, you can't find that video anymore, unfortunately. But the idea was post-apocalypse, Dodrio has lost all of its feathers and mutated to become a fearsome predator. I do like this idea, though, that Dodrio should get new heads, uh, new, more heads. So let's turn it into a dark dragon type. Would that be totally rogue and off the wall? Here it is. Let's take fun at the fact that Dodrio Dodrio is flying without wings and lean into that. Give it more heads and make it a five-headed Hydra dragon that flies and propels itself with a rotating tail. It's a little bit bonkers and a little bit quirky, but exactly the kind of thing that I could see Pokemon doing. I think, though, this wouldn't work as a regular evolution. I could only see this as an in-battle form, so let's call it a mega evolution, where the type changes to, yes, Dragon Dog. Next up in the Pokedex are Seal and Dugong, who are long overdue a new evolution. Seal is literally a seal. Dugong, literally a Dugong with a horn. So let's lean into the Narwhal aspect and go for an Ice Fairy Pokemon. This is uh, kind of a relative, I guess, of Primarinas. It is a simple evolution, and I don't have a name for it, so I'm going to need your help with that in the comments down below. But I think it's very pretty, and it might make me actually want to use a seal or a Dugong in the future. I can imagine its health and defenses getting unbelievably high in this form. Then we have Grimer and Muck, who of course have Alolan forms, and Shelder and Cloyster, who sort of have a new form, even though you don't access it in Slowbro's tail and Slowking's head. 
I could take it or leave it. I, I didn't come up with a new design for it for this video, but uh, definitely a, a Pokemon that, like, I would like to see those forms, honestly, become canon. We have the Gengar line that comes with both Gigantamax and Mega Evolution, and of course Onix evolves into Steelix, and there's also the anime-exclusive Crystal Onix that they need to hurry up and make canon. Then there are Drowsy and Hypno. Again, Pokemon that I'm kind of shocked haven't got a new form. It really feels like they would lean into it quite well. Six years ago now, my friend Ghostly Felis helped me out in creating artwork for a sort of witch doctor slash plague doctor inspired variant of Hypno for the Alola region. Grass, psychic type. Though looking at it now, I really feel like it could be psychic dark. Not really sure. And wearing the skulls of a Cubone. It's a fun idea. Then there's the Krabby line, where Kingler got a Gigantamax form. Uh, Electrode has seen new forms in Hisui. Executor is the poster child for regional variants with its Alolan form. Marowak and Cubone again here with Alolan forms. Uh, Hitmonchan and Hitmon Lee actually weren't even related in Generation 1, but Tyrogue and Hitmon Top fixed that. And then we enter the portion of the Pokedex where a whole bunch of Pokemon got new evolutions. Lickitung got Licky Licky, Coughing got Galarian, Weezing, Ridehorn, and its evolution line got Rhyperia, which honestly was a little bit of a mistake. Uh, Chansey got both Blissey and Hippini, Tangela, Tangrowth, Kangaskhan got Mega Evolution, Horsey got Kingdra, and it takes us all the way up to the Goldeen line and the Starmie line. With Seeking, we're gonna go for another past Paradox Pokemon. And the way the Paradox Pokemon's names are just words mashed together works really well for Sea King. And now we have the Sea Emperor, a rival to Gyarados in ancient times. This Pokemon ruled the seas. Sea King is without a doubt the most boring design, so I really do think it needs to be expanded in a huge way. It was believed once that Magikarp evolved into this form, and in fact Magikarp used to be blue until they became orange to blend in with this Pokemon's uh, spawn. This in an attempt to not get eaten by the Sea Emperor. For Staryu and Starmie, I think we're going to go for a regional variant, one that crawls across the surface of the Paldea region, the gem core at its center, fueled by terrestrial energy. This Pokemon is a dark ground type, so the complete opposite of psychic water, and it crawls across the ground, and yes, can live in the sea, but has been slowly invading the beaches of the Paldea region, its crystal resonating with the terrestrial rocks all around. They say that swarms of this Pokemon seem to act together as if controlled by some kind of hive mind. I think this Pokemon would be really fun and really creepy, the source of many Pokemon creepy pastas. Mr. Mime got Mime Jr. and Scyther got both Scizor and then most recently Cleavor. Jinx got Smoochum and Electabuzz and Magmar both got baby Pokemon and evolutions. Pinsir got a mega evolution and Tauros most recently has had three new forms and an evolution? No, just three new forms, though it was always somewhat tangentially related to Miltank, so Taurus has seen a lot of love. Magikarp and Gyarados, of course, have not only Mega Gyarados, but Feebas as a spiritual successor, and then there is Lapras that has its Gigantamax form. The next Pokemon that has no new form is Ditto, though I would argue this is the one Pokemon that just no matter what should not get a new form. It's got a spiritual successor in Meltan, which is a callback to the beta evolution for a steel type Ditto, uh, but ultimately Ditto should be well left alone. It is the Pokemon that changes form the most. Eevee has had new evolutions in Espeon, Umbreon, Leafeon, Glaceon, and Sylveon, as well as its own Gigantamax form, and Porygon has had Porygon 2 and Porygon Z, which then takes us on to the fossils. And for these Pokemon, I would like to refer to some of my fake mon from my four-hour Pokemon Tempest movie, where we have Kabutops and Omen Star. We have Scaradactyl too, but Aerodactyl is a Pokemon that already has a Mega. And the idea of these Pokemon are not so much as... I guess they'd be considered Convergent Evolution as a ghost Pokemon, much like the one seen in Lavender Town and on the Terrastal Crowns, has inhabited the carapaces of these Pokemon, meaning they live side by side and are completely unrelated, but look the same. Snorlax got a pre-evolution in Munchlax, and then Articuno, Zapdos, and Moltres all got, of course, Galarian forms, taking us on to the pseudo-legendary of the region, which, believe it or not, still has not had a new Mega Evolution, Paradox Pokemon, or anything. And this is the Dratini line with Dragonite at the helm. And yeah, I don't want to go for a split evolution here. I don't want to go for a regional variant. I want to go for a paradox Pokemon, a Dragonite from the future, representing some kind of incredibly powerful mech suit. 
This is Iron Paladin, a fairy dragon type, and it is what the Dragonite of the future would look like. It's no longer a dragon knight, it's a paladin that uses both magic and, of course, its knightly status to help the people of the world. However, usually it is in fact piloted by a knight who sits in the cockpit within its chest. It's big enough that a person could get inside and unify their mind with that of this Pokemon. You can see that the design is more closely resembling that of Dragonair, it's just because Dragonite has always felt like a really out there evolution for the Dragonair line. I think incorporating those features has solved this Pokemon uh, perfectly. And then finally, in the Kanto region, we have Mewtwo and Mew. Now, Mewtwo has had new mega evolutions, as well as, of course, the Pokémon tournament exclusive Shadow Mewtwo. That just leaves us with Mew. And I was going to save this for a totally separate video about some Paradox Legendary Pokémon I've got. Uh, that will be coming soon. It's a much shorter video. But this is Mew. It is the ancestor Pokemon, and so I think yet again a perfect opportunity for a Paradox Pokemon. Here we have a creature I will simply call New or Neo Species, as Mew is the New Species Pokemon, and it resembles very closely both Ancient Mew from the Pokemon card games, and I think it would be cool to canonize that a little more. But if you look at its tail, you'll see Azelf, Uxie, and Mesprit in there. And I think that's because, once again, I want to help unify these Pokemon. This is what Mew looked like, supposedly, in ancient times, or at least what people imagine it looked like when it was half Pokemon and half deity. This Pokemon, with its DNA twine tail, gave life to all Pokemon as we know them today. Or at least, that's what people say. You know what? I actually do have artwork for a new legendary Mewtwo. I was going to save it for a later date, but I just think I really want to show it off, and uh, I, I know what my next video is going to be with fake Mon in it. Mewtwo won't have a place in that video, so this is Iron Brain. It is simply Steel Psychic type, and of course it takes inspiration from Armored Mewtwo, and uh, it, this Pokemon has been created in the future to be the most powerful Pokemon of all time. Superior, of course, to all previous versions. If Pokemon go this route and they continue adding Gigantamax forms, Paradox forms, perhaps new Terrastal forms at some point, or whatever comes in Generation 10, it genuinely won't be long until all 151 classic Pokemon have had their designs revisited at some point. And while I don't hope it for every generation of Pokemon, for the first 151, I really do hope it happens. What can I say? The original 151 holds such a special place in the heart of so many people, including for the Pokemon Company, which is why they are doing a big Pokemon card set this year for the original 151. Did you know it features the first Kadabra card we've had in nearly 20 years because of a scandal to do with uh, Yuri Geller? You, you've probably heard about this already. Either way, when this set comes out, I will be cracking it open and selling it over on today's sponsor, Whatnot. And thank you to them for sponsoring this video. Whatnot is a live buying and selling platform where I list up my Pokemon cards starting at just one pound. The timer goes for 30 seconds and you can place whatever bid you want or not, of course. If perhaps you have a collection of Pokemon cards that you're looking to sell, this is the quickest and easiest way to list them anywhere on the internet. You simply put in the title and then you show off the card live on stream. I never worry as to whether the people buying my cards are worried if the condition is not as I've listed because they can see the cards with their own eyes as they go to buy them. There's no last second bid sniping either, which means when the timer gets down to 10 seconds or below, if someone places a bid, the timer goes back to 10 seconds, meaning you as the seller get the best possible price and you as the buyer are always happy not getting undermined by someone's last second bid. I think it's an amazing platform, and the best thing about it, of course, is the creator and collector community over there. People who are streaming themselves, selling and buying, and you can pick up some amazing deals just chatting to the rest of the card collection community. So if that sounds like something for you, click that link at the top of the description to not miss out. Head on over to my account, and make sure you've got my next stream favorited. I'll be sure to get out as many of these Kadabra cards as I possibly can to people when they are released. Thank you to Whatnot for sponsoring this video, thank you so much for watching, and of course, so hi, Pokemon Masters. Hello there, it's me, Professor Oak. This video is over, so please choose another one wisely and quickly. Bye-bye. Just the biggest thank you to those of you who are supporting this channel on Patreon, and a special thank you to the big patrons of the month, Jed Rubin, Charmander Anzibal, Anthony Lee, The Elgator, and Michael Hornshoe. Thank you so much.